smooth, sweet, creamy, a little cheesy. Just a perfect base for any kind of saucy meat or stew. Going gluten-free doesn't necessarily mean giving up on your favorite dishes, so long as you're willing to get creative in the kitchen. Perfect. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 gluten-free alternatives. For this list, we're looking at the type of essential gluten-free alternative ingredients that help keep gluten-free cooking fun and interesting, all while facilitating the creation of delicious meals. Number 10, polenta. What is that, polenta? Amy, get out. Right. <laughs> Boiled cornmeal. It might not sound overly appetizing when described that way, but it's a versatile dish originating in Italy that's also totally gluten-free. Polenta can be served hot, in a manner similar to oatmeal or grits, and basically is a porridge. But when allowed to cool, it hardens into a soft, doughy shape that can be grilled, fried, and baked. Make sure you add your polenta in a constant stream. You don't want to add it all at once because then you're going to form lumps. You can also mix ingredients into it before hardening in order to make the loaf more flavorful or texturally interesting. Originally considered to be a food of the lower class due to its simplicity, low cost, and high nutritional value, it has since gone on to be reinterpreted in a variety of creative ways, including more gourmet preparations. What a feast! This is how they used to eat the polenta. Polenta went straight on in the middle of the tables, many, many spoons around. Number 9. Avocado slash Coconut Slice the unpeeled avocado in half lengthwise and remove the pit. When it comes to gluten-free dessert alternatives, these two are the cream of the crop. Although one is often thought of as a vegetable and the other a nut, they are both in fact fruit. And both work wonderfully as gluten-free ingredients in any dish that needs a creamy consistency. Ice cream might not scream for gluten, but in our world of processed foods, gluten has snuck its way into most major store-bought ice cream. Thankfully, Frozen avocado and or coconut cream can be used to produce a silky, smooth ice cream that will make you forget all about your old brand of choice. It's also generally healthier, which is a rare quality to find in a dessert this good. It's creamy, it's silky. You get the flavor of the avocado, but then the sweetness from the coconut. Number eight, black beans. You guys, these will put a smile on your face and a smile in your belly. Is there anything more comforting than a chocolate brownie? There's no shortage of brownie recipes out there that use some form of gluten-free flour. But look deep inside and ask your childhood self, do any of these brownie recipes really hit the spot? Gluten-free brownies are often too dry, too cake-like, or simply too dense. They often lack that rich, moist, delightfully chewy texture that makes a brownie better than a significant other. This is so good. It's still ooey and gooey from the oven, and it's super fudgy, which is exactly what I want in a brownie. Black beans gives you the best result. But as with any dish, you need the right recipe. Get it right and this dessert is pure heaven. Decadent, rich, and fudgy. Why not whip up some meringue for our fat-free and gluten-free frosting option? This is what they look like when they're done. Aren't they beautiful? You get this many meringues out of two egg whites. It's just amazing. Number seven, grits. That's right, I said grits. Not the old lumpy, fine white stuff you're thinking about or maybe instant coming out of a packet, but the good stuff. In theory, oatmeal should be gluten-free. But as many celiac sufferers will tell you, anyone with a serious sensitivity is better off not risking it if the brand isn't explicitly gluten-free. These days, most brand name oatmeal have been cross-contaminated. Thankfully, Grits makes for a scrumptious, carb-heavy breakfast to get you through the first half of the day. Unfortunately, Grits can't replace oatmeal in every recipe, but when it works, it works. While Grits contains more carbs and calories than oatmeal, it balances the scale with a lower fat content and more folate, a water-soluble B vitamin that the average body doesn't get nearly enough of. You can pour the grits into individual ramekins like this or a small casserole. Number 6. Cauliflower Many people have bad history with this vegetable thanks to its regular appearance as a side dish, steamed to death and utterly flavorless. But today, cauliflower is enjoying a new image as a gluten-free, low-carb chameleon. By grating cauliflower, it can stand in for couscous. And just slide it back and forth. And I'm using the biggest size on the cheese grater. And actually, if you look at it, it looks like little mozzarella cheese. Low-carb eaters also use it to replace rice. When we say cauliflower pizza crust, there's bound to be more than a few raised eyebrows out there. But have faith, it's delicious. By food processing cauliflower into an almost flour-like consistency, then straining out the water, you get a dough-like substance that results in one mind-blowingly good thin crust pizza. And check it out, it even folds up just like traditional pizza crust. Mm. Number 5. Portobello Mushrooms 
The stems are very tough and fibrous, even woody. So these need to be trimmed off and discarded. You can take a paring knife and just go right in there and cut it off. Is there a role in hamburgers that a portobello mushroom can't play? A whole portobello mushroom is a popular vegetarian replacement for beef patties. But for gluten-free diets, you can keep the beef and use two portobello mushroom caps to serve as buns. The resulting burger is tasty and filling, so the likelihood of anyone asking for seconds is pretty slim. But with the lovely umami characteristics that the portobello mushroom adds, we doubt you'll miss the soggy old traditional bun. That being said, not everyone likes mushrooms. What in the devil's name is this? Portobello mushrooms. Where's the steak? Oh, there's no steak. That's a healthier option. It's organically grown. For those whose mouths don't water at the sound of fungi, thick slices of sweet potato coated in olive oil, then baked or barbecued, can also serve as a healthy, gluten-free alternative hamburger bun. Number 4. Gluten-free flours and starches Here is the flour. Mm. Bleached, 100% fat-free, best when kept in an airtight container. Seems this one's taking after his mother. There's a wide variety of gluten-free flours out there, but sadly, there's no single alternative flour that perfectly mimics the characteristics of wheat. Thankfully, dedicated gluten-free bakers have put in the time and effort experimenting with flour blends to get you the best mixture for each of your baking needs. Recipes for which can be found on popular cooking blogs. Baking may never be as simple as it was with gluten, but by using some mixture of sorghum flour, almond meal, rice flour, chickpea flour, brown rice flour, buckwheat flour, cornstarch, tapioca starch, or potato starch, to just name a few, you're sure to get a great end result. This is a great gluten-free product that you can use um, that, again, doesn't contain gluten and it actually has a great texture. Number 3. Quinoa Your friends will love how healthy it is. Couscous, those delicious little pearls of steamed semolina that make for the world's best mixed salad. What potluck, picnic, or classy party is complete without a couscous dish? While couscous might be off the table or a picnic basket when it comes to gluten-free food, but quinoa can be used in many of the same dishes. It provides a comparable mouthfeel and even looks rather similar to the untrained eye. But quinoa is a gluten-free grain, unlike couscous, which is similar to pasta in the way it's made. Couscous is also simple carb, whereas quinoa is considered to be a superfood, delivering all nine essential amino acids, close to twice the fiber of your average grain, a healthy dose of iron, and much more. Slow your roll, slow your roll, all right? Tonight, we're going to eat your mother's little red pebbles. It's quinoa. Yeah, so it is. Number two, lettuce leaves slash collard greens. So you just sort of set these nice trimmed lettuce leaves around. Almost every culture in the world has their version of a sandwich, and almost all of them are off-limits on a gluten-free diet. Why? The dreaded bread. Sure, there are plenty of gluten-free breads out there, but they are too often expensive, complicated to bake, or simply fail to provide the same mouthfeel. Rather than chase the bread they used to have, many gluten-free eaters have turned to leafy greens. Lettuce leaves work great as crunchy taco shells or wrapped around hamburgers. Blanched collard greens provide a sturdy, durable wrap, capable of holding together even when used for the most overstuffed burritos. Swapping out bread, tortillas, and other breads for leafy greens also make for a much lighter meal. And the combination of cold, crisp lettuce with that hearty, spicy, salty, sweet chicken filling, oh, it's amazing. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Japanese soy sauces come in a variety of types based on their balance of wheat and soy. Your average soy sauce contains a good amount of both. Our tamari is completely wheat-free. They look beautiful. There's about a billion different things you could do with these, and I have a few ideas of my own. Number 1. Alternative Grains and Vegetable Spirals Quinoa might be able to replace couscous, but what about the many forms of pasta out there? For starters, rice and quinoa noodles are both great options. Just make sure not to overcook them or they'll fall apart. But what are you most looking for in gluten-free pasta? A recreation of the wheat version or something totally different? Much like the bread, vegetables can provide versatile solutions for gluten-free pasta dishes. Zucchini can be spiraled into noodle-like shapes or flat ribbons for fettuccine. Eggplant lasagna is, to put it simply, divine. Spaghetti squash isn't just a name either. When cooked and hollowed out, it makes lovely, perfect little spaghetti noodles. Just pick a pasta and start cooking. Give everything a really good stir and let it simmer and sizzle together for about three minutes, I'd say, and you're pretty much done. 
Do you agree with our list? What are some of your favorite go-to gluten-free alternatives? For more delicious top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. Wow, this pizza is dynamite. Make it at your next party and watch as your friends literally devour it in seconds.